Hey everyone, um, for those just joining us now, um, welcome to the Rustic Pathways webinar. Um, I'm gonna just talk a little bit while we wait for a couple more folks um, to get in here. Um, but this is the How to Choose a Program webinar for Rustic Pathways. Um, so what we're gonna go over tonight is just a little bit about um, the different program options at Rustic Pathways, a little bit about the history of Rustic, um, some good tips and tricks for um, selecting a program or sort of looking through all of our program options. Um, and then at the end of the webinar, we'll just have an open Q&A um, and answer any questions that you have, um, either specifically or generically. Um, usually we try and answer as many of the like generic big questions that a lot of people have, um, but the, depending on time, we might get into some more specifics. Um, and I'll just start the webinar right now, so I'll share my screen. Awesome. So let's get started. Um, so as I said, um, welcome to the Rustic Pathways um, webinar. We are going to talk a little bit tonight about how to choose a program. Um, so we're going to go over um, a couple things just related to Rustic Pathways um, to give you a background about me and my history with Rustic. So I've been with Rustic for uh, just under 10 years now. So I worked on the operational side of things um, for about five or six years. Um, I used to run our programs in India, China um, as the director. Um, and then I just run programs in the United States, the Dominican Republic, um, Tanzania, Fiji, Australia, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos. So I've got sort of a wide breadth of knowledge and experience with different programs. Um, so I'm always happy to run through programs and trips with families. Um, I'm a global program advisor now at Rustic Pathways, uh, which just means that um, as people call or email or use the online chat feature, um, just having that sort of previous experience working with so many different trips, I help families and students sort of find the best choice for them, um, really based in what they're looking for and what their goals um, are for traveling. Um, also in the background today, I've got my colleague, Emily Harney, who's also one of our global program advisors. So she'll be answering questions while we're going through the webinar. Um, you'll be able to see on, um, on sort of the webinar feature, um, something that says Q&A. So if you have any questions, just type them in there. Um, Emily will answer as many live questions as she can. And like I said, we will um, get to some, some of the bigger, broader questions at the end of the webinar. Um, during this webinar, um, this is what we'll go over. So I'll talk a little bit about who Rustic Pathways is. I'll talk a little bit about the Unwrap Rustic holiday promotion that we're having right now. Um, we'll talk a little bit about how you can sort of compare and contrast experiences um, and using the website to sort of um, see the different experiences available. Um, we'll talk a little bit about how you evaluate the destinations just in terms of types of community service, um, the different kinds of accommodation or lodging. Um, we'll talk about maximizing your summer um, so just about um, thinking about how long or how short you want to stay in country or traveling. Uh, we'll then go over a little bit about scholarships and fundraising opportunities. Um, I'll show you quickly how to enroll on the website. Um, and then, like I said, at the very end, we'll take questions. Um, so Rustic Pathways, who are we? What do we do? Um, overall, our mission, vision, values of Rustic Pathways is we see ourselves as the intersection between education, travel, and philanthropy. So we're really about getting students outside of the traditional classroom walls. Um, we want to talk to them about not just issues that are facing um, them as students, but sort of global issues. We want them interacting with other communities and with other um, just villages and people around the world, um, which one both helps them get a better, broader sense of the world that they live in, but also that the world that they come from and they grew up in in their own community. Um, obviously, travel is a huge part of that. Um, we think it's a really great way to sort of broaden that perspective um, and just have experiences um, with other peoples and communities, um, and not just the communities that we travel in, um, but also that the people that they travel with. Um, so our staff members are extremely diverse. Um, the students in our programs are really diverse as well. Um, you know, about 80% of our students do come from the United States, um, but about 20% come from other countries. Um, so even within the program itself, um, you get a lot of different um, cultural perspectives and backgrounds on the trips. Um, and then philanthropy, that's a huge part about Rustic Pathways. Um, about 70% of our programs do have a community service element to them. 
Um, so a lot of them are um, have some kind of element where we are volunteering, and I'll go over that a little bit more in the presentation, what that means and what that looks like. Um, but ultimately, like giving back um, and being a, a positive influence in both communities that you're traveling with, um, and then hopefully communities back home is a, a really key component of Rustic Pathways. Um, right now, we're in our Unwrap Rustic Holiday promotion, so it's a great time to learn about how to choose a program um, as well as signing up while the promotion is still happening. Um, essentially, during the holiday season, we're really big advocates, um, and there's a lot of research that shows that physical things isn't necessarily correlated to uh, higher happiness, um, but experiences are. Um, so we really think it's a great time to think about um, getting an experience to a student so they get outside of the classroom, so they get outside of their own home community, so they get outside the, the friend group that they've grown up with for the last 16 years and just experience and do something different. Um, we often just hear about how students come back with a completely new perspective. Um, I don't know how many times parents call me just to say, wow, like I, I didn't realize how much my student or my son or my daughter um, could change just in two or three weeks of travel, but I've really seen a noticeable shift after them coming back. Um, so we're really just big advocates that this is a great opportunity to think about um, sort of giving something to your students beyond just a physical thing. Um, that being said, um, we also know it's the time of year that people do like to give a physical thing. So in conjunction with um, a trip, our Unwrap Holiday, our Unwrap Rustic Holiday promotion right now, um, if you sign up for any trip before December 24th, um, you'll get a, a Rustic Pathways sweatshirt um, in the mail so that you do have something that you can sort of wrap up um, and give as a gift during this time of year. Um, also another really cool thing about the promotion that I love to mention um, is that if you sign up before the deadline, um, then for any summer program, you have until March 1st. If you wanna cancel the program um, for free with a full refund, or if you wanna change dates or change what program you signed up for. So if you're hoping to give it as a surprise and you don't wanna ruin the surprise um, before the actual time you're exchanging the gift, um, it's a great opportunity to sort of um, give the gift and then um, have a conversation with them, you know, a couple weeks after the holidays to sort of hone in on what program it is that they actually want to do. Um, next thing I want to talk about is the different types of experiences. Um, so this is really important when you're considering what kind of um, trip or what kind of program you're looking for at Rustic Pathways. Um, here are a couple things that we just have listed here to think about, which would be um, if you're looking at a community service trip, what kind of community service are you looking for? Are you looking for adventure? Do you want something super high adrenaline based? Do you want something that's traveling? Um, you know, every one to two days you're in a new location. Um, are critical issues programs, those tend to be a little bit more academic based. Um, so they go into more deep dive um, programs talking about issues that we think are gonna be critical, um, critical issues just for um, our younger students and generations to face in the future. Um, so that could be things like immigration issues, um, access to water, access to education, um, gender equality issues. Um, so like I said, those programs tend to be a little bit more academic focused, where there'll be some pre-departure readings, there'll be a lot more deep discussions on the program. Um, so it's another thing to consider while exploring programs. Um, base houses is another really important component um, we like people to think about. A base house at Rustic Pathways is essentially a um, housing that is either owned, operated, and run by Rustic Pathways. So it's specifically built or designed to accommodate our students, um, and it just hosts Rustic Pathways students. Um, they tend to be a little bit nicer accommodation, um, so they, um, you know, some of them have air conditioning, or they'll have a swimming pool, or they'll have a soccer field out back. Um, and they sort of host um, larger groups. So they might have anywhere between 30 and 50 students there at the base at, at any given time. Um, I'm actually gonna um, take us on a look at our website right now, um, just so you all have a bit of experience about how to explore um, our website and how you can sort of narrow in on some of these experiences. Um, so this is our website, just rusticpathways.com. Um, and if you've explored our programs in the past, actually, we've just launched a, a new version of our website um, around five or six months ago. So it may look a little different if you're just coming back to us this year. Um, but I think the easiest way to sort of look at our website is just using this menu um, section right here. 
which you'll find in the upper right hand corner of any page. So if you just click on that section, um, right here it'll list a bunch of different things. So you can either sort of explore by destination. So if you were 100% sure that you just wanted to look at programs in Africa, or if you were really set on going to Australia, um, you can just click by region, or region, or by, or by, or by program. This section is so helpful. So in this section, it's where you can see some more of our um, sort of like bigger categories of things. Um, and I think the easiest one to look at as you're sort of exploring and comparing and contrasting program is clicking on this one right here, which is just program types. So as we click into program types, um, this page will pop up um, and you can sort of either look by um, like by category, which is some of the things that I was mentioning here. So you might be able to click on the base house program if you're like, yeah, it sounds great for um, us to go to a base house program. I want something a little bit larger, maybe something with a little bit nicer um, accommodation. Um, this would be a great way to sort of start exploring that. And then I'll list all of the programs that we define as base house. You'll also see right here on these programs, they'll have a little base house tab. So if you're just searching through all of our programs in Morocco, or if you clicked on the all programs tab, you'll also see some of these categories um, right above the program title. Um, but this is a really quick and easy way to look at all of our base house programs. Um, I'm just going back here now to that types of programs section. Um, you can also look um, at some of the other categories that I mentioned. So you can look just by those critical issues programs, which are maybe more of the academic programs. Um, you can click into programs if you're just looking for spring break. Young Explorers is for our programs just for middle school students. So these are more of like the category types of rustic pathways, or you can explore by what we call personality, or it's more kind of like the theme of the programs, if you will. Um, so some of the options in here is if you want to do, if you know that you want to do something very, very community service focused, you might click on this service buffs program. The service buffs is essentially going to refer to programs that have um, a high number of community service hours based on how long the program is. You know, so a, a one week program might have, you know, 20 to 25 hours of service, while a two week program on the ground might have 30, 35, 40, 45 hours of service. Um, you can also sort of select if you're, if you know you're interested in um, more environmental programs or if you're interested in, um, you know, if they're interested in like public health, that might be the aspiring doctor section. Um, if they're interested in working with kids, that might be the future educators section. So this is a kind of a really fun and easy way um, to sort of explore through a lot of those different um, program types. And we'll switch back here. Oh, there we go. Awesome. So as we click back here, um, the next thing that we're going to talk about is just different types of service. So like I said, there are a huge number of programs at Rustic Pathways where service is um, at least a small component of the program up to a very large or the main theme of the program. Um, so some programs on the website, um, actually every program that has community service will mention exactly how many hours of service that it has. And I think that's a really great way um, to tell how, um, how much service or how much of the program is really dedicated to that type of work. So a two week program that has you know, maybe 10 hours of service that means we're maybe spending probably two afternoons doing a service project. Those type of programs are really great if you're um, just trying to introduce a student to community service, um, but maybe don't want it to be the major component of the program. Two to three afternoons of service is a really great way for them to sort of just dip their toe in the water. If you want something that's really service oriented, those are going to be the programs that have, like I said, maybe 20 to 25 hours of service for a one week program or maybe you know, 30, 35 hours of service for a two week program. Um, those types of programs, when you sort of count out the hours, that's gonna be probably about you know, four to six days um, where every morning or afternoon, we're doing you know, three to four hour um, blocks of community service on the trip. Um, then within those community service programs, um, the community service is gonna look very different from program to program. Um, these are just some of the examples of the different types of service that we're doing. And these are really great questions to um, ask your student what they're interested in if they want to do volunteer work. 
Um, I'm a really big advocate. Um, I talk to a lot of parents um, and sometimes parents just go on the website or they look at the catalog and they say, this is it. This is the trip that I want my student to do. Um, I really think it's important just to ask some basic questions to students because I think the buy-in is really important. Um, having them say like, well, yeah, I guess I'd be more interested in working with kids or I'd be more interested in doing some construction work or working with animals really helps once they get on the ground to feel like they have been part of the decision-making process. Um, and I really think that just opens them up to a more um, sort of life-changing opportunity to see that service and see that volunteer work on the ground. Um, so these are some um, really great examples of some probing questions that you can either ask the student or if you're a student on this webinar, asking yourself um, for what it is that you want to be doing on the ground. Education really refers to um, working with kids. Uh, so a lot of people say like working with kids um, on the ground. So we have some programs that are really developing leadership skills. We have some programs that will actually be in the classroom and might be working with um, like language exchange or English um, exchange in the programs. Um, not every program that we do, you know, is just teaching, um, teaching English. And even on those programs, I usually talk to students the programs where those exist, it's not just teaching head, shoulders, knees, and toes, or colors or numbers. Oftentimes, it might be in a village where we're working with the seventh grade classroom, and they're working on something like demonstrative pronouns. So things like this, that, these, and those. Um, that's where actually we become really helpful and beneficial in some of these communities, where as native English speakers, we can really talk about some very complex issues beyond just basic vocabulary. Um, and so we'll give our Rustic Pathways students some tips and tools and tricks about like, okay, how do we do something more complex like demonstrative pronouns or parts of speech, um, knowing that they maybe have never taught another student before um, or have never had that experience um, you know, in a classroom. And really with all of these things, um, you do not have to have had that experience in order to participate in that service. So as we move to the next category, which is infrastructure, a lot of people describe that as like construction or building. If you have never picked up a hammer in your life, that's okay. We will teach you um, how to build a trench or how to mix cement or how do you construct a wall um, if we're rebuilding a classroom. Um, the infrastructure projects really are the sort of small scale development projects um, or sometimes large scale development projects. Um, it really depends on the programs. Some programs like our Culture in the Crater program in Tanzania, we may uh, be working on building a class or building a housing for a teacher. Um, so the community just needs more teachers and the government will bring more teachers to the community if they have a place to live. So right now our infrastructure project in that community is just building a house so more teachers can come in so that we can reduce overall classroom size. Um, infrastructure might also be um, digging trenches so we can get water access to communities or parts of the village that have not had access to water before. Um, so the projects themselves are, like I said, more construction based. Um, the next category is env environment and animal welfare projects. These are things like, um, could be working with the turtle conservation project in Costa Rica, where we're working with the National Park Service in um, helping turtles that have laid their eggs in parts of the beach that is not hospitable um, for them to actually hatch, um, doing night patrols, unburying them, and reburying them in parts of the beach where they actually do have the ability and the possibility to hatch and actually become full-grown turtles. Um, it also could be environmental projects like working with the Amazon rainforest in Peru. Um, it could be a replanting effort in the Dominican Republic just something in sort of like the environmental protection realm. Um, the fourth category is sort of economic development. Um, this would be something um, like in Peru, we currently work with some families of developing um, guinea pig farms. So guinea pig um, production is actually a really um, cool livelihood in Peru. It's a way that a family can sort of have jobs or sustainable income. Um, but they might not have the resources to have the, the guinea pig hutches or the guinea pigs themselves to actually get it off the ground. So an economic development project is something like that where we're developing sort of sustainable projects for these families. 
Um, and then the last is sort of like public health or social services. So we have a couple programs, um, like one in Thailand or the Dominican Republic, that are looking at public health and um, the different ways that affects different communities. So that could be everything from preventative health care, um, like what happens when a student just needs glasses. Um, and we'll talk about the idea that because they've never visited a doctor and maybe have just poor vision, they tend to not do as well in school because they can't see the board or they can't read. Um, or we might talk about how the fact that a family doesn't have a, a nearby local clinic to get to, so they may have um, like minor health issues that become major health issues. Um, so what can we do to increase sort of that development work um, in those regions? Um, so these are just really great examples of, of probing questions to sort of ask yourself or your student to figure out what they might be interested in in terms of community service. Um, the next thing you can do when you're sort of comparing and contrasting, you know, where should I go and what should I do, is obviously destination. Um, so this is where we travel um, across the globe at Rustic Pathways. Um, we're in 17 different countries and run about 100 different programs. And oftentimes this is a really good guiding principle for some people. Um, so if you're a first time student, maybe you wanna stay a little bit closer um, and maybe stay in the United States or do something like Costa Rica or the Dominican Republic. Um, or may, maybe you've just had a fascination with Africa your whole life. So you're really interested in Morocco um, or you did a report on Thailand or Cambodia and you wanna see it on the ground. Um, that can be a really great guiding principle um, for people to choose where they should go. Um, one thing I always talk to both students and parents alike um, is further away does not mean more exotic. So just because you're traveling all the way to Mongolia does not necessarily mean that Mongolia is more exotic than Cuba. So you don't necessarily have to travel 4,000 miles extra um, to get a really cool cultural experience. Um, but keep in mind, you know, a lot of parents also are like, oh, I just want them to stay as close as humanly possible. Um, but maybe your student really does, for whatever reason, has just been fascinated with Fiji. Um, and so going maybe a little bit further away might actually get them a better overall connection experience on the ground because they do have that buy-in. So it's just a really important thing to sort of consider um, which program you wanna do, maybe how far, how close, or culturally what areas of the world are just really interesting to you. Um, and then just some other questions that you wanna consider. Um, as I said, how far do you wanna travel is a huge question that you might wanna ask. Um, number two, are you looking for something off the beaten path? Um, like I said, we have almost 100 different trips at Rustic Pathways, and our programs are really designed to appeal to different levels of students. Um, so some of our programs are really in the middle of nowhere and are very rural and rugged. So you might have an experience living in a village where there's no running water, no electricity, where we're sleeping on a mat in a classroom in a village of 500 people. To some students, that sounds amazing. And to some students, that is the absolute opposite of the type of experience that they want. They want something a little bit more comfortable, or they're just a little bit nervous and have not ever done anything like this before, have never traveled um, you know, without you know, mom or dad or a guardian. Um, maybe you've never had an experience meeting people that they haven't gone you know, to school with for the last dozen years. Um, so sort of evaluating how rural and rugged of a program is really important to consider as well. Um, and then also, um, do you have any like dietary restrictions or allergies or reasons why one destination um, may be a better or worse fit for you? So a couple examples of something like this, occasionally I'll get questions of someone who um, maybe is on a growth hormone that needs to be refrigerated. Um, not a problem, there's lots of programs across the globe where we can easily handle a medication that needs to be refrigerated but we may not be able to handle it on a program like climbing Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, where we're just on a mountain and there is literally no electricity for eight days of the program. Um, if you also have something like a peanut allergy, a peanut allergy is not gonna be a good fit for a program in Thailand, where just peanuts are so pervasive um, in the food and culture that we're not able to safely have someone on a lot of our programs in Southeast Asia just because we can't guarantee they might not come in contact with that peanut. Um, all of our programs um, have something called essential eligibility criteria, um, where we look at basic um, food allergies or restrictions, everything from 
like I said, peanut allergies to celiacs and gluten-free um, to shellfish allergies, um, you know, to things like, you know, can we handle like refrigerated medication, um, things like that. So if you ever have a question um, where you think you might have a, a medical restriction, um, please always feel free to reach out to us um, so we can figure out if, um, if the, you know, program you're looking at is able to sort of accommodate that restriction. Um, next thing I want to talk about is maximizing your summer. Um, one thing that I think is so cool about Rustic Pathways is our programs are all designed to be a la carte. And what that means is each individual program is one to two weeks in length, um, but they're all designed to connect back to back to back. Um, so here's an example of a student, Sammy Rosenberg, um, who did three programs with us in Tanzania. Um, you'll see on the website in the catalog, it'll look like there's a couple days overlap for the programs. Um, but that's always because there's, um, it's listed as departure and arrival dates from the United States, but on the ground in the same country, everything begins and ends on the same day in the same city in that country. So if you want to, you can certainly spend as short as one week um, in any of our countries, um, but we'll have students that spend six, seven, eight weeks on the ground. So really thinking about how long of an experience you want in that country um, is also really important to have. And also countries will connect regionally. So if you wanna do something say in Thailand, it's actually very easy to connect to a program in Cambodia, um, Myanmar, Laos, Vietnam after your trip. Um, so typically our programs in the South Pacific, in Asia, and then Latin America will all connect with one another. So it's just another um, cool factor to consider, um, you know, what program or what experience you want. Um, last thing I like to talk about is just um, scholarships and fundraising. So obviously cost of program is really important to consider as well. Um, we do have scholarships and fundraising opportunities at Rustic Pathways. And I'll back out of here really quickly just to show you on our website. Um, again, if you just go to rusticpathways.com, I'll go to the main page again. And just go to that menu section one more time. And the how it works section, you'll see something that says scholarships. Just click on that and it'll give you all the information about our scholarships and financial aid. Um, annually, we give out about $200,000 every year in scholarships. Um, the service scholarship is all um, financial need based first, and then we evaluate students on merit. Our Critical Issues Summit Scholarship, which I won't go into the Critical Issues Summit, but it's a really cool program um, that we're running this year in Southeast Asia. Um, that is um, all merit based, so you don't have to qualify for that. Um, financial need for that program. Um, but there are some really cool things to explore um, just in looking at our financial aid um, options and packages at Rustic Pathways. It's also just completely unique in the student travel realm. There really are no other companies that are devoting this amount of resources. Um, $200,000 in financial aid is just a ton of money that we give students. So always encourage people to look at that as options. Um, but I also just encourage people to think about that just in terms of your family um, the program you select for your family. So um, roughly all programs are float around $2,000 per week of programming. Um, it varies a little bit if you're looking at, um, you know, a community service program versus a um, more adventure trip. Um, but globally, our programs are actually really similarly priced, but you're going to see a large fluctuation in price overall, um, just based in how far away the destination is. So a program like Costa Rica is just gonna be overall a little bit less expensive because the flight will be less expensive um, versus something like Mongolia or Tanzania, which just might have a higher flight cost. So I just think that's a really important thing for families to examine when they're selecting a program. And when you're on the website itself, you'll see the cost of any program on the program page. And if you just click on the word airfare, that'll give you the cost of our group flights to those destinations. Um, these are the scholarships, as I mentioned. Um, so just really quickly here, like I said, last year, um, we gave out $285,000. Um, so like I said, every year we're giving out um, over $200,000. Um, we gave out 106 service scholarships, um, 13 uh, critical issues scholarship. Um, it was called by invitation only last year. Um, this year, we're actually going up to 25 of those scholarships. So every year, it's just a huge thing that we're dedicated to as an organization. Um, the last thing I want to show you before we take questions is just how to enroll. So I'll dip back here to our main page. Um, and the best way to do it, um, you can always do it just from the main page if you just click on this enroll button. Um, but let's say you're looking at a program 
I know I keep mentioning Tanzania, so I'll just click there. And let's say you decided culture in the crater, that's your program, that's the trip you're super excited for. When you're in the program page itself, that's where you're gonna find information about um, you know, the itinerary, the dates, um, frequently asked questions, a packing list, all of that kind of good information is gonna be on the individual program page itself. Um, and right on the program, you'll see the departure dates for that trip. Um, the website's also pretty cool because it has live availability. So you'll be able to see if a program is starting to get limited or um, if it starts to get to, I think, eight spots or fewer, it'll list exactly how many spots are left. Um, and that from right there is where you can sort of select enroll to make sure that there's still availability on that trip. Um, and that will take you to the application page itself. Um, and that's where you'll just start filling out the application. I always tell families account for maybe 15 minutes or so to fill out the application. It's just basic demographic information. So student name, parent guardian information, what trip you're signing up for, um, you know, mailing address, what your t-shirt size is, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but it does take about 15 minutes to fill out um, from the website. Um, it does also have to be filled out online. You can certainly give us a call and we'll walk you through it over the phone um, while you're filling it out, but it just does have to be filled out on the website itself. Um, and the last things I'll show you before we get questions actually, um, it's just some cool ways to explore other ways, just get inspired. Um, I think our Instagram page is pretty awesome. Um, we're on heaps of different social media. Um, this is just Instagram from, from the web. Obviously, you can get on your phone. Um, we'll just consistently be putting up photos from trips around the world. Obviously, summer is really big for us of student travel, summer and spring break. Um, we also have private or schools that travel with us throughout the year. Um, so I'll post some, um, some trips um, that we have going on um, throughout the year on our Instagram page. And I'll actually pull up a digital copy of our catalog as well. Um, this is just a digital copy of our catalog. Um, I definitely encourage you to order a catalog from our website. Um, it takes about seven to 10 days from the time you order it to receive it in your house. But this is just a really great way to learn about Rustic Pathways Basics, um, a really quick way to page through all of our programs. Um, and one thing that I love is that all of the photos on our Instagram page and our catalog, all taken by either students or staff members that we have on our trips. So nothing that we have is stock photo. We get that question a lot. Like, really, am I gonna be able to feed that giraffe or do we go to that mountain? Absolutely. Everything in our catalog is representative of the programs um, that you're seeing there. So it's a, just a great way, again, um, to sort of find some inspiration um, as you're going through all of the trips. Um, and that's sort of all of my tips and tricks that I have for y'all sort of in discovering um, great ways to sort of explore programs and find what are good fits for you. Um, I definitely encourage you to reach out um, with any questions. Um, here's our email address and our phone number. Um, call or email us whenever. We also have an online chat feature. Um, one thing that I don't, don't think people realize is it's either myself, Emily, or Jesse who are answering all of those online chats and um, phone calls and emails. Um, and we've done these trips. We are so excited to talk to all students and parents and love comparing and contrasting trips. So always feel free to reach out to us. We have been there, we're on the ground, we can sort of give you the different vibes of programs. And I think it's just a really great way to bounce off ideas and sort of poke and prod um, what might be the perfect fit for, um, for you or your student. Um, and now I'm gonna take some questions. So let me just see here, some questions that have come up. Cool, so one question that I have is just about safety on our programs. Always a really popular question. I'll talk about it very briefly here, um, but we have a ton of resources on our website about that, as well as a whole webinar, which I think was an hour and a half, dedicated to like how we set that up. But very quickly, um, go into a couple of things. All of our programs and countries go through an entire safety and risk management assessment. Um, we have several people that their entire job is just setting up our standards, practices, and policies at Rustic Pathways. So every country goes through that safety and risk management protocol. Um, so we look at a country um, politically, environmentally, socially, um, and from a health perspective. So we wanna make sure that it doesn't matter what your race, gender, sexuality, ethnicity is, that you can travel in that country um, without a problem. 
we want to make sure that the country isn't politically volatile um, in regions or areas that we're traveling. We want to make sure that we have an action plan if, um, you know, even something like we have a program in New Orleans. So um, are we traveling at a time where there could potentially be hurricanes or do we have a, a risk management plan for how do we assess some of those um, sort of like natural risks that may occur? Um, and then we look at every program um, from an indiv individual perspective. So that's everything from, um, you know, the transportation we take from the airport to the hotel. We want to look at um, our activities. So whitewater rafting, zip lining, um, the community service projects themselves, or when we're going to the markets. We look at each of those individual activities and we make sure that we understand um, any risks that are involved and we reduce those risks when possible. Um, it's actually unheard of in our industry. We're at 100% compliance with our vendors, which means that every vendor we work with from, like I said, whitewater rafting people to um, repelling to the vehicle transportation, that they have to meet and fulfill all of our rustic standards as well as industry standards and go through an annual evaluation um, to make sure that they still fulfill all of those standards. Um, we also make sure that we know all of the medical facilities um, from more local clinics to bigger hospitals um, at any given point on the program. Um, parents always think, I always just wanna to go to the biggest hospital. Um, but realistically, if, um, if you have say, just had a, a stomach bug or have had a fever for a day and I just wanna get you checked out by a doctor, that might be a more local clinic that's 15 minutes down the road um, versus if there was something like if you um, were surfing on our surf program and the surfboard hit you and we were worried about a concussion, maybe that's the hospital that's 60 minutes away rather than the more local clinic. So all of our programs go through that same safety and risk management protocol um, for health, you know, where the nearest health providers are. And then we look at it from an individual perspective. So we're looking at the individual student's um, medical history and pertinent medical concerns, um, as well as training for our staff members, um, both on that individual program and that country, um, and how they deal with different um, medical situations, environmental situations, behavioral situations, all of those kind of things. Um, like I said, heaps of resources on safety. I could talk another 90 minutes about that. So any other follow-up questions, we're happy <laughs> to take those um, sort of as phone calls later. Uh, another question is, do people tend to travel with friends or in groups? Um, and there's actually uh, travel in either way, realistically. So standard numbers at Rustic Pathways is annually about 75% of people travel on their own and about 25% of people travel with a friend. So it's not at all uncommon um, to travel with a buddy, although it slightly skews more to students traveling on their own. Um, as a trip leader, I don't think one way is better or worse than the other. Um, the one thing I always sort of advocate is if you do wanna travel with a friend, um, make sure that both you and your friend are just as excited and passionate about the program that you select. Every once in a while, I'll see someone who um, signs up because they're really excited to work with turtles and their friend goes, eh, like never really cared for them, but my friend's going. And I think that's actually a disservice to both you and your friend. Um, yes, it's a cool opportunity to travel with a buddy, but really the power of the programs is the individual content on them. So I always just want to make sure that the people on the programs are really, really passionate about what they're doing. Um, and if you do want to travel with a friend and they're sort of like, yeah, I don't, you know, I'm interested in this other thing, but you're interested in a different program. I just think a great sort of middle ground is, like I said, programs connect. So maybe your friend does one trip, you know, your friend does summer camp leadership in Costa Rica working with kids. You do the Nicoya Turtle Conservation Project working with turtles. And then the last week of your program, you're doing Caribbean Adrenaline where you're doing more of an adventure program for a week on the ground. So I think that's sort of like a good middle ground. Um, and then I have another question about, um, do our programs tend to have older or younger students? Um, and our average age distribution at Rustic Pathways sort of looks like a standard bell curve. So we see the most number of 16 year olds, we see slightly fewer 15 and 17 year olds, and then slightly fewer 14 and 18 year olds. Um, typically each country will trend a little bit um, older or younger on that curve, depending on that country. So a place like Costa Rica or the Dominican Republic um, tends to skew a little bit younger. So there might be just more 14 and 15 year olds on that curve. 
while a place like Mongolia or Tanzania probably skews a little bit older, maybe more 17 and 18 year olds on those programs. Um, I personally, again, am a big advocate that go with your heart and your passion and what you are excited for. Um, a lot of people get worried of like, oh, am I 14 and going to Mongolia where there's more 17 or 18 year olds? I tend to think that, you know, in high school, we divide people up as freshman, you know, sophomore, junior, senior, and we get very um, designated by age at this time in their life. Um, but really, our programs are about passions. So it's way more important to link up to other students with the same passions and interests that you are. So if that means going to Mongolia, where maybe people are a couple years older than you, on the ground, I think that tends to just be a better fit for everyone because your, your passions are more entwined with one another, which is a much more easy way to connect with someone rather than you just both happen to be 15 or you both happen to be 17 years old. Um, so my tip with that is always still just go with your gut and your passions um, is always the best way to sort of make a, a choice of program. Um, I don't see any other group questions coming in. Um, so I'll give another moment to see if any other questions are coming in. Um, and if they're not, I just want to say, you know, thank you all so much for joining the presentation. Um, as I said, we are always so excited to answer questions for y'all about sort of finding the best fit for you. Um, so if you need anything at any time, definitely feel free, um, you know, to reach out to us by phone, email, online chat, send us an Instagram message, doesn't matter. We're always super excited to talk to um, both parents and, fam or parents and students alike. Um, so just reach out whenever you have any questions. And with that, it looks like I have no more questions coming in from Emily. So like I said, just wanted to say thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, and we're really excited to catch you either in spring break or summer 2019. Thanks so much, y'all.